Hello and welcome everybody to a new Sapien Masterclass. Today I'm very happy to welcome drummer, composer, educator, live from Helsinki, Finland tonight. Welcome, Thomas Rauhala. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's so it's a big honor to be here, and I'm so honored that I got an invite to this Sapien Masterclass. And yeah, I'm from Finland. Helsinki is about 30 kilometers from my home studio where we are at at the moment. And if you know any other cities from Finland than Helsinki, please let me know. Amaze me. Like, it, it's a surprise for me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you said it all, Christian. And I'm a, I'm a drummer, composer, uh, drum teacher. I have my own drum school here in Helsinki called Helsinki Drum Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, I play live shows, not so much during this corona time, obviously, but I used to play live shows. It was fun when right. <laughs> I had some gigs, yeah. Great. Um, okay. So, Thomas, the topic today um, you brought up is clockwise and counterclockwise around the drum kit. Can you give us some, some little insight what the system is all about? Of course, of course. Uh, Clockwise and counterclockwise. Uh, I, I chose the topic because I think this might interest uh, beginner players, but also more advanced players. Uh, we can do some exercises today that are more uh, fun for the uh, advanced players. But the, the idea is very simple. How to lead with your right hand around the kit how to lead with your left hand around the kit. So when we are going clockwise, we are leading with our right hand. And when we are coming back counterclockwise, we are leading with our left hand. Uh, many times when you're a right-handed drummer, uh, it's pretty normal that your uh, left hand is weaker, like your left foot is weaker, weaker than your right foot. So these are pretty simple exercises to get more confidence on the kit. So you basically know what you're doing. Okay. You're doing so you don't get this like, oops, oops, oops. Not cross sticking. Yeah. 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 That's a completely different case, the cross stick thing. <laughs> right. Okay. So I'll let you right jump in and uh, hide outside the picture and come back in roughly about half an hour for the question answer section then. Okay. Yeah. See, See you in a bit. Still. So let's start. Uh, first, I'd like to give you an idea how I think about the drum set with these exercises. Uh, we can cut this drum kit in half from here. This would be the right hand side. So the right hand w uh, takes care of this side and left hand takes care of this side. Uh, the idea is is simple. We have all, always the starting drum or the simple will play three notes and the finishing drum or the ending drum will play three notes. So if I'm starting from snare drum playing the first tom and the floor tom, I would play three, two, three. And because I'm here at my left side, I'm starting with uh, left hand. So the first uh, three notes would be here. Then two and three. So three, two, three would be the idea behind this exercise. Now, if we are going clockwise, uh, I'll show you, let's do this first. I'll, I'll show you a few uh, combinations. I just improvise with these ideas I'm about to show you.
So I'm going clockwise or counterclockwise. And let's break down this thing now. So three, two, three. Starting with the left hand, if I'm here at the left side. So this would be three, two, three. Like I mentioned uh, earlier about the confidence, uh, this is just like pure muscle memory practice and getting confidence on the kit. Uh, you think uh, if you're driving a bike, for, for example, you don't think that, uh, okay, I'm driving a bike, I'm driving a bike, because you have the ability to drive the bike and you have all the muscle memory and balance for that. It's the same here. We just do repetition uh, and we get the muscle memory so we don't get these like oops oops moments all the time now if we are going counterclockwise we would start from the right hand side let's take floor tom uh, first tom and snare drum to this exercise so when i'm here at the right side now i'm starting with my right hand and i play three two three And the next step would be to combine these two exercises. First going clockwise, then coming back counterclockwise. The mo motion of your body is, is really important. We don't want this to look like fencing, like this, uh, like we are in panic all the time. Uh, so when I'm playing the three strokes here, when my right hand has played its part or its, its stroke, it's already moving here uh, towards the next drum. same here uh, when the left hand has played its part it's it, it's already going here uh, to the snare drum to start the new round like this so first right hand is moving already there then comes this two strokes and again three uh, i know this is pretty simple but if you want to um, if you want to be faster on the kit, these are these are really important things uh, that you know how your how your body and how your hands are moving. So basically, we are doing upstroke here. It took only 20 years for me to 
understand this. I know it's it's so simple that it's so difficult. Uh, you have to play away from the drum, out of the drum. If you bury your stick to the drum like this, then you're doing twice the work you should you should be doing. If I'm bearing the stick like this, it means that I have to bring it up myself. If I'm using the rebound, playing out of the drum, it's easy. It's so much easier. Also, using different dynamic ranges or different dynamics with this exercise uh, will help you a lot. Or if you're playing fast uh, and softly or fast and loudly, it's, there, are, there are different cases. When you're playing soft, your grip, your, the grip in your hands has to change a bit. Or in my opinion, my, my, my grip does change a bit when I'm moving fast on the drums. I, d I cannot have the stick as loosely as I'm playing uh, slower slower uh, tempos or uh, slower subdivisions. So when I'm go going fast, I have to give some more pressure to the stick. Uh, I don't know if the pressure is the right word, but I don't, wa I don't want to squeeze the, the stick. The, the idea of holding, this, holding the, stick, the stick for me is it has to be really loose like this. I don't want to squeeze it. It has to be like this. So when I'm going, going faster, I have to give some more pressure just not to drop the stick. Okay, the next step could be adding more drums to the exercise or more cymbals. So remember, the first one is three strokes, and the last one is also an uneven number, uh, three strokes. It could be also fives or seven, seven strokes, but now we are using uh, three strokes for the starting and the ending. Drum. Let's say this is the first, hi-hat is the first thing we are playing, and the last one would be this stack over here. And we can play whatever in between. We can play snare and the toms, for example. So in slow motion, this would look like this. Three, two, 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 and three back the same way, twos, and again three. So we are not trying to lead with our right hand coming back here. It's, it's difficult and it's kind of stupid. Um, let me try this exercise uh, in a few different tempos. So going clockwise and coming, coming back uh, counterclockwise. Yeah, this is a good exercise not to hit the rims of your drums. Uh, when you're playing faster tempos, that's the first problem usually. When you're hitting the drums, you don't have the uh, necessarily you don't have the the right place where you're hitting the drum. 
So this helps for that. Let's try another one. Um, let's take, for instance, first tom, second tom, ride, and the floor tom. And let's go back again counterclockwise. So the first one is three notes, starting with the left hand, because this is this is the left side, like we talked in the beginning. So three. Actually, you can like vis uh, visualize like different shapes on the drums. Like this could be like this, like L, letter L, or something like that. This could be like uh, also if if we are playing threes on the kit, we could have like we could open up the pattern like this. First, um, the second tom, first tom, floor tom, snare drum then stack and hi-hat. So we are always opening the motion more and more. Just use your own imagination with these exercises. Okay, let's use some click. So we could, for the, for the advanced players, uh, we could do some some exercises that are more challenging. If you think this is too easy now, so let's take a click track. Let's play a simple version first. Let's play eight notes. Uh, eight note triplets, uh, sixteen notes, and sixteen note triplets. Uh, for example, with the three two three idea, going clockwise. This version. Uh, excuse me for a minute. I put some click here. All right. So, starting very slow, eight notes. You can play whatever subdivisions you like. Let's try something more crazy, like uh, let's play 16th notes, uh, 16th note quintuplet, 16th uh, note sextuplet, and 16th uh, note septuplet. Let's hear it. Pray for me. Okay. 
that kind of like a rhythm pyramid could be one good exercise to practice your time um, and your coordination and get get new ideas with this this simple three two three idea okay we are now doing all the work with the hands we could do something with the feet as well one idea could be to play hands and feet in unison also we could play bass drum in between every stroke with the hand uh, let's try to play two uh, three two three exercise going counterclockwise and adding the feet to play just uh, the feet in unison like this There you have to be very careful not to have flam strokes like this. So try to play your feet and hands uh, in perfect, perfect unison uh, like this. So I'm going basically three, two, three, clockwise and counterclockwise. The same idea with the feet playing in unison. Uh, another idea could be to have alternating single strokes, uh, alternating singles uh, like this. First, uh, if, if there's somebody who doesn't know what alternating singles are, but you have probably heard those. Uh, let me explain it first. So alternating singles is a lick or a exercise where uh, right hand plays, then comes left foot, uh, left hand plays, and then comes the right foot. So it's a like linear kind of thing. Actually, we can use this alternating singles idea to every exercise I've showed you so far. But if you, if you try to play counterclockwise three, two, three, first um, the feet in unison, then I'm trying to uh, change it to the alternating singles. You have the uh, idea how it sounds. Again, use dynamics. It's not uh, very interesting, uh, in my opinion, it's not very interesting and musical to play loud as, you, as, as loud as you can all the time. Uh, it gives a nice twist when you, you're, you're playing uh, piano and forte and everything in between. So actually this alternating singles is kind of like thunder sound when you're playing on toms. Let me give you, a, you an example.
So just three, two, threes, and all the same combinations I showed you, like three, two, two, three, two, two, coming back the same way. So this is a nice exercise, how you can add your feet to this exercise. Uh, whatever, you can use whatever ideas you have, like we could use triplets in between, we could have the same thing if we, if we are going counterclockwise from here, we could use triplets uh, like this. So now I'm playing right hand, and then right foot, left foot. And then the same left hand and right foot, left foot. So then the three, two, three idea would be like this. Really slow. Let's try it a little bit faster. Let's try. Okay, that's, that isn't easy for me. Uh, so, alternating singles, uh, hand, hands and feet in unison, uh, and then the triplet version is nice also. Those are probably good exercises for the advanced players. But what I, what I love about this exercise, it's so simple that you can do it on many different levels. If you are going back to history, uh, checking guys like Buddy Rich and more like modern guys like Virgil Donati, for instance, they are doing the same kind of stuff, but uh, in a very fast tempos. And the control to their instrument is, is something really crazy. But basically, this is this is the same thing like Buddy Rich is doing. Uh, for instance, this triplet thing he's doing from floor tom to snare drum like this. I've heard uh, Virgil ha has had some ideas, uh, like I showed you earlier, like opening up the pattern like this. So the same three stroke patterns going like this. So that's that's basically. If, if you want to ha have some questions about these exercises, we can take it like further, or uh, we can invent some ideas at, at the moment, like while we're speaking here. So let me have your questions, and uh, let's play some more. Thanks, Thomas. This this is great. I, I jump in here. There's a question right here from. Uh, Adele, on a single pedal triplet, how do you get your foot even? My single pedal technique uh, is something I've learned from Dennis Chambers uh, in the pocket video that came out. You remember when it was still the like cassette, like those big ones, you don't remember anymore. So uh, I was watching those kind of videos like Dennis Chambers was one of my biggest drum heroes when I was starting to play drums and I learned the uh, slide technique uh, from him and in the video 
uh, he says that he he heard it first from John Bonham and many many drummers use the same technique uh, the heel toe version has really never worked for me I don't know why maybe for like hi hat stuff like that kind of stuff the heel toe one is really good but for the double stroke uh, on the bass drum for uh, with the single pedal I use the slide technique uh, it's a pity I don't have another cam here I could I cannot move my laptop from there uh, but um, yeah it, it's basically sliding sliding your foot um, you could practice this for example uh, like this let's play uh, hand uh, the, the bass drum and the hi-hat in unison like this the double stroke is in unison and let's just take one snare, snare drum in between like just to try try to get it even with the hi-hat it's you you cannot escape uh, from from the hi-hat now when you're playing with the hi-hat in unison so we don't want any flams like this let me show you uh, this thing in different tempos For example, like that, the the problem with the slide technique might be that the the second stroke is always a bit louder, so it's like boom, boom, boom. boom. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's 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 good, it works. But if you want two even strokes with the bass drums, uh, you can practice that. Like tr try to get avoid from the the other being louder. Uh, that problem was probably the, the biggest reason why I started to play the double pedal because I noticed uh, during some live shows when there was uh, were songs that required a lot of this double stroke thing and for the PA it sounded like boom, 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 and I didn't want that so I had to I had to get the double pedal I don't know why I was so uh, against double pedals in my uh, early days. Uh, I used to play a lot of stuff with the uh, floor tom and bass drum doing things like... So I didn't use double pedals, but when I realized I can get more punch and more um, boost with the left foot, it's it's so much more punch and uh, it's it's so much more aggressive sound coming out of from from the PA. Yeah, the the slide technique is really good. So there's another question from Arunava asking how to develop accents on the hi hat. I'd say it's important to play the pad you know play the rudiments uh, after 20 years of playing like i said earlier after 20 years of playing i started to think more about my my hands like what, how they move how my body moves what's the motion behind my hands how, how do i get one good sound from the drum you know it's 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 easy to play like a crazy monkey you know like this but when you have more dynamics and more thought behind your motions it becomes more difficult but how to play accents with the hi-hat hmm. what would be the best answer for you 
I don't know. I I just try to play like I, I think I'm a kind of like a rudimental kind of player. Uh, I practice a lot of rudiments, and I just try to play the rudiment stuff around the kit or, or everything I know. So basically, if I'm doing any accents or diddles or anything like this. It all comes from some kind of rudimental drumming. Uh, so learn your rudiments. Play play those classic drum books, and I bet you're you're getting all the great stuff from from the hi hat as well. There's not no secret behind that. Okay, there's a question from Pelu. Uh, asking how would you approach extending the exercises for a second floor tom or further on both left and right hand side? Yeah, if if we have more stuff here or more stuff there, like more toms here, uh, then we have, of course, we have bigger bigger movement, which makes it uh, more difficult. Like if you are coming from this flo floor tom to, for example, snare drum that is here, you really have to move your body away from the hands like this. So, so that makes it, it, it more difficult. But like I said, you can have as many drums as you have. You can have 100 drums and you can still have the same concept, like the three and then two strokes. And when you're finishing, coming back, you're just playing the three coming back with the two again and you could have like i said you could have fives or sevens or any other uneven number so you can come back with your left hand but just try everything like use your, use your imagination play some symbols as well incorporate your feet with the exercises and when you have played this exercise for a few minutes you realize there's plenty of uh, things you can do it. Just be creative. Right. I mean, you mentioned symbols. Talking about that uh, that little stack that you have over your floor tom. Can you give us a run through? Can you let us know what this is and a run through your symbol setup, please? Yes, this is uh, the Sizzler stack. I don't. I can't remember when this came out. Uh, I think it's a very cool, cool one. It has a 12-inch AAX aerosplash on top and 10-inch hole, mini hole at China uh, at the bottom. It sounds like this. Also, you can make it more trashier sounding if you're just loosening the, the screw here. And with tightening the screw, it's it's more precise. Yeah, and then I don't know if you, Christian, are going to ask about my favorite symbols, uh, but I'm already telling those. So basically, what I have here, most of them are my favorite Sabian symbols. Uh, the next one is HH medium ride remastered line. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's 20 inch, and then I have HH remastered medium hats here. I, I think they are like the perfect pair. I I heard this the the first time I heard this. It was a YouTube uh, clip, like a, a promotional clip, and I thought, oh, this is sounding so good and. I have to get these, and I ordered these immediately. And I was really hoping that they would sound like it was in the video, and it was even better. And what I what I like about these these high hats, um, these hats are they are really really like precise. They are warm sounding. They are not you know it's it's not the annoying frequency. They are warm, and you can really hear the stick from here. I like to play a lot of, you know, like those hi-hat accents and uh, rolls and rudiments to the hi-hats. So it's it's really 
precise. And also this hi-hat makes a good pair for the hi-hat. This, this right symbol here. I like to play a lot of stuff with the hi-hat and right symbols. Uh, for example, something like this. You can also crash it if you like. Then, these are the HHX Extreme Crashes. Uh, this is a quite beat up version. I really rarely like break symbols. Uh, I I don't know how many symbols I have like have to return <laughs> to the store because they are broken uh, during the last years, but it's like a, maybe five or so. I, I use really thin symbols. I love really thin symbols. And these extreme crashes are something I, I use on almost every gig. I think they are they are really musical and really responsive and quick, quick symbols. Actually, I have one here, uh, the big one. This is 21 inch extreme crash. And you can see how thin this is. So you can actually bend it like this, and you can play it with your finger if you like. Same with this. You can do those simple swells with your finger. Then I have a Paragon Splash here, 8 inch, and uh, Evolution Splash, 7 inch. Um, what else? Yeah, I forgot to mention, I actually played the complex crashes a couple of days ago here uh, at the local Sabian dealer's shop, and I really fell in love th with those. They had something something similar to these extreme crashes, but I think I have to get those. They sounded so good. Check them out if you haven't. Uh, complex Thin Crash. Uh, I think it was Complex Thin Crash I played, like 22 inch or so. It was a huge one. So you can even use it as a ride and, and a crash. So you can basically play your, uh, your gig with one symbol if you like. It has, to, has it all. Yeah, the 22 inch uh, HHX complex thing. Yeah, it's a, it's a great setup. It's a great combination. Interesting with the HH uh, remastered hats and right and the HHX extreme crashes, right? So adding a little bit more bite also to it, right? So the crashes, yeah. nice setup. Got uh, another question here from Spencer. Um, have you experienced any hand pain or tingling fingers doing or after practice? try to keep a loose grip with the fulcrum at my first finger, but I notice a lot of pressure in my hands. Well, I haven't had any pain with my hands, uh, but I've had some problems with the, the hip uh, flexors. Like, that's the only problem probably I have, I have got from this, this uh, job right here. So, if I just uh, tell about the my problems a bit, uh, my my hip flexor problem is probably because when when I you place or I place my pedals, I used to place my uh, single pedal like the bass drum pedal like this, and then the hi hat pedal a little bit like this. So they are they are not you know in, they are they are not like symmetrical. So it it gives some like strange twist to your like hips like this so you are like have this this rotation there and it gives pressure to the hip flexors and you you're doing this for 20 years of course you're starting to feel pain here here and uh, you're sitting in a car you're sitting behind the drums you're sitting all all the time so this muscle 
it doesn't do what it should. Yeah, but um, talking about the hands, yeah, there was a uh, one nice. Uh, there's a nice quote from my friend who is a great uh, teacher and my uh, my colleague at my drum school, Jaska Lukkarinen, uh, another crazy Finnish name. He he said that uh, you have to hold the stick like there would be a small bird in your hand. So you have to adapt to the to the, the bird's movement. You know you don't you cannot kill the bird like this, or it sounds bad. So you have to have loose loose grip like i told you you know every every stick has a tone or or a, like note you cannot hear it now probably but so when you're playing the drum you have to have the the beautiful sound from the stick at first and then from the drum uh, so if you're squeezing the stick you're giving too much pressure to the stick you cannot hear the tone anymore it's dead the bird is dead so have have a loose grip learn about different uh grips the basic basics like american uh german and french uh, traditional grip and then then next one is the the balance points how how do you use do you have your uh is this pointer finger yeah pointer finger and thumb uh giving the pressure or is it more like the middle finger giving the pressure or is your grip like this these are all different tools for drumming and when somebody asks me what is your technique uh, i cannot say i i probably say uh, i try to know them all you know they are different tools if i'm playing the snare drum or if i'm playing the hi hat for example i want to play some rudimental stuff or tricky things here I probably have my pointer finger and thumb giving the pressure like this this would be the the creep but if I'm doing this exercise I showed you going around the, uh, the kit uh, I, I'm probably using this kind of thing here so my pointer finger is loose and my middle finger is kind of moving the stick the the uh, difference between two these two grips is or how you hold the stick is this the rebound if i'm holding with my uh, pointer finger and thumb like this the rebound is like this but when I, when i'm letting this uh, finger here loose the rebound is way bigger so for instance, playing the hi hat like this. Usually, my hand, uh, finger, uh, pointer finger is loose. Um, or if I'm going around the kit, if I stop there and look at my creep, it looks like this. So the middle finger thumb and uh, pointer finger are making this kind of like triangle this is this is the creep if i want to make a loud sound from the drum i don't i don't hold the stick like this it's harder to make noise with this so i go probably the back of the stick and now the pinky and the ring finger are holding the stick like this of course all the fingers are attached to the stick i don't ever do this you know my fingers are attached uh, to the stick like this so there's no really no control if you're playing like like this also remember if you have some pain here uh, in your forearm uh, it's probably because you're you're squeezing the stick too much here and i know there are like different opinions about this but i i never close this gap here so when i'm closing the gap uh, right here like this if i close close it too much i get a like immediate tension right here so check if you are squeezing it too hard uh, try different uh, balance point points for the stick so this is like the 
uh, ring finger, pinky, then the middle finger, and the pointer finger and thumb. I hope this short answer was worth <laughs> worth listening. Thanks. There's also a question from, from Pelu um, <clears throat> asking for tips or walkthrough about uh, the process you went through, helped you play more away from the drum, right? I think basically what you just explained with the, uh, with the rebound, right? To utilize the rebound on your strokes. Yeah, there are, there are like, um, I'd say, learn the four basic strokes. Find someone who can teach you full strokes, down strokes, up, uh, tap strokes, and up strokes. These are all, all like really old stuff. You know, uh, it comes from the like the old rudimental drummer uh, thing. But when I'm playing out of the drum, uh, I'm actually, yeah, it's it's something like you know, if you can see me or like here. It's it's almost like bouncing a ball. When when you're bouncing a ball, you don't do this. Your hand is your hand is not attached to your body, or it it, it shouldn't be. If it is, get some help. Uh, when you're bouncing a ball, your hand does something like this, right? So you're actually catching the rebound like this, like bouncing the ball. It's it's pretty simple thing. I've I've done I've done these exercises, uh, these like four basic stroke uh, exercises for a few years now. Also, I've done the like Muller exercises for a few years. I never studied. I, I've studied in two different drum schools, but I never really got into like Muller technique or this. Nobody taught me these like ideas before. Like I met a few guys who knew a lot of a lot of things about this you, this rudimental stuff but learn those like basic basic strokes full stroke down tap and up stroke and use the rebound remember the like bouncing the ball movement Yeah, it takes some time to get used to that thing first. Uh, let me give you an really, um, it's so stupid, it, it's so simple, but let me give you an, one example. When you're playing a simple drum beat, you should, uh, you should be doing this. So then second one is already going up, uh, preparing for the accent. One, two, three, four, like this. What I see most people do, like the not not professional drummers, but like beginner drummers, uh, are doing this. So they actually have to do the upstroke motion again. They could be doing this. This is one way to do it. One you have your hands like this or then go more with the like uh, molar kind of thing like this I know it's really simple and and one thing uh, off topic uh, what I forgot to mention is the breathing nobody really taught me uh, how to breathe properly when I'm playing I just noticed uh, stuff when I was playing like this kind of things i i noticed okay that I, i've been like i i lock down kind of i lock down myself and don't breathe correctly so if your muscles don't get any uh, oxygen it's pretty simple it, the playing is harder uh, if you swim or play the saxophone if you don't yeah well you don't die if you don't breathe while playing saxophone but if you don't breathe when you're swimming then you die but it's the it's the same thing. Remember to breathe correctly. The the playing comes much more easier. Great valid point. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. Uh, Spencer was asking for your three favorite right symbols. Okay. 
you are lucky because I have one here. So this this is one of them. This H H uh, medium remastered, right? Twenty inch. Then I have some artisans here on the floor. This is artisan uh, light ride. Uh, this was this big, 22 inch. Uh, I really love this, like the whole artisan series. If I'm not playing the extreme uh, crashes and HHX line, usually I'm playing the artisans. What would be the third? It's probably a legacy heavy ride. It's it's a very good one. Uh, yeah, I, I'd I'd choose those three. So, artisan light ride, legacy heavy ride, and this HH. Great choice, absolutely. Um, Dominic sent in a question that uh, he often experienced uh, the stick slips in uh, his right hand when he tried to have a loose grip. What would you recommend, actually? You are lucky again. This is like commercial stuff. Hey, I use sex wax. Okay, I, I never used a lot of this stuff. If anybody doesn't know what is, this is, let me show you. It really is called sex wax. And it's a, the best for your stick. Yeah. So this, this is really good stuff. Uh, if you want to have better grip, you're, if you're sweating like if, if you're sweating a lot or uh, having like a too loose grip, you just rub it like this to the stick. And voila, you have a great grip. And th th this doesn't, this stuff doesn't uh, feel like messy uh, in your hands. It's it's not like, Ugh. it's, it's, it's a, uh, try this. It's made in the United States. Thanks. So, got one more question before we wrapping up here, um, Thomas. What is actually currently the um, your current projects that you have coming up for the next time? Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, due to Corona situation, all my shows were cancelled uh, from from the start of the year, which is not really fun. But uh, as musicians. Us, uh, as musicians, we have to adapt to the situation and try to solve this problem somehow. So, one thing that sort of came out of this problem was our drum school, uh, Helsinki Drum Academy. Uh, it, it, it came more active, and we have done now few online courses. Uh, those are in Finnish, but uh, we are thinking about making uh, subtitles or uh, English versions as well. So online teaching, recording here at my home uh, are, are probably now the, the projects I'm working on. Making music here. Uh, live, I don't know when the, the live show thing will start again. I, I hope that it starts really soon. I was just laughing that uh, Will this be like the, the future uh, gigs? Like, I have a gig tonight, yeah. Then coming back to my basement. But yeah, I, I mean, it's this is really fun and I really appreciate this. This is an honor to be here, but just just meaning like, when, when will we play live shows again? Because I, I really love to meet new people and, uh, you know, see people's reactions and uh, talk to new people and yeah, no, in person. Yeah, but um, I've done uh, a lot of different stuff. I, I played with pop artists, uh, like pop artists yeah, in Finland. Um, I've, I've played with uh, Poets of, of the Fall. Uh, it's a Finnish rock band. I have, I have been like a substitute guy for the band, doing some uh, live shows with them outside Finland as well. And I have my own, own bands and uh, I compose music. I play a little piano and a bass and guitar here in the, in my home studio. And I released a couple of EPs uh, last year, which were a huge project. Like 
uh, personal achievement. So I have two EPs if you wanna check them out uh, on Spotify or other digital services. So that's basically the, the current situation is that we are not playing live shows yet with anybody. Yeah, hopefully soon, maybe some smaller venues and places will reopen again, right? So uh, before we finish, Spencer is asking uh, if you can give us a quick funk groove, maybe a minute or so, a little playing funk. and soloing. Would you be up for that? Funk groove. Okay. What kind of funk groove? Uh, let's try some. was like a tower of power kind of cool improvisation <laughs> <laughs> great thomas thank you so very much for joining the thank session you. thank you christian and say it was great absolutely and uh thanks everybody for watching stay safe everybody and hopefully to the next time soon yeah. thank you bye-bye thanks guys